Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. This is the 2021 virtual public exhibition for the Grand Assault of Arms. Uh, my name is Sean Williford. I am the president of the Association of Historical Fencing. And for the better part of the last two decades, we have sponsored a classical fencing tournament and public exhibition here in New York. I am joining you virtually from the location of our last public exhibition, which was held in 2019 at the Library of the New York Academy of Medicine. We have an exciting program for you today in which uh, we resume our operations after missing out an entire year last year uh, due to the pandemic. Unfortunately, it was an expedient to host a tournament this year due to disruptions in teaching schedules, school schedules, school attendance, people's training regimens. But we wanted to make sure that we had an opportunity to engage the public in the educational mission of the association. And for that purpose, we have arranged with a variety of experts from around the world uh, to have uh, joined with us today and provided us remarks on a number of important topics uh, related to fencing in the classical period. And the exciting thing about today's program is that we have a couple of presentations specifically on stick fencing, uh, which we have had at some grand assaults, but not every one. So this is actually a very special year to have so much material available for this discipline. Before we get started, I wanted to give you just an overview of our agenda for the day. Uh, after my remarks, which I promise will conclude quickly uh, because the best remarks are brief, uh, we will then begin uh, the exercises uh, with a uh, presentation of the Grand Salute of Arms, uh, which is a way that we traditionally open uh, the final day of the Grand Assault. We will then have a series of four presentations. Um, our first presentation will be actually conducted as a live discussion between myself and Maestro Lorenzo Ravanzani Manuzardi and Gianluca Zanini, who are joining us live from Milan. We will then have a recorded presentation by Maestro Ramon Martinez on French foil, its origins in history. We'll then have a recorded presentation by Maestro Paul McDonald on the single stick and its evolution. And finally, a presentation on 19th century physical culture and how that relates to fencing in the classical period by Mr. Ben Miller. We are lucky that all of these presenters are joining us live today so that we will have a brief opportunity for questions after each presentation. But we understand that everyone's time is precious. The holidays are upon us uh, and other people have everything uh, that they need to get accomplished. So we will be trying to keep things within the time uh, that we have been scheduled for. So I thank you very much, uh, everyone who is in attendance today. Uh, these remarks, as well as the rest of the presentation are being recorded. And we are looking uh, to publish uh, and make available uh, the presentations from all of our presenters uh, as part of our educational publication program uh, for the coming months. So without further ado, I wanted to again welcome you all to the 2021 Grand Assault of Arms. The Grand Salute is our next topic. And the Grand Salute had its origins um, in the 18th century. The reverence or salute was performed as the, before the assault or before working with a fellow student in the Saldam. During the last quarter of the 18th century, the salute began to incorporate the thrusting at the wall exercise. Thrusting at the wall was an exercise to practice thrusting in tierce and cart, two primary thrusts in small sword. This thrusting could be done on a target or actually as a part of an exercise with a fellow student. When practiced with the fellow student, the parries will be added for the thrusts in tierce and cart and the students would take turns attacking and defending. The more elaborate version of the Grand Salute that we'll see demonstrated today became a common practice in French fencing schools throughout the 19th century. It was a formal courtesy paid by the fencers to each other and to the audience. It gave the fencers a chance to warm up 
and center themselves prior to engaging in the assault. The salute was also known simply as le mur, the wall, because of the, uh, the incorporation of the thrusting of the wall exercise in Thiers and Cart. The exact details varied from master to master, but in 1888, the Academy Dom of Paris codified the salute in its final form. So I give you the grand salute To you, Leander, I obey. Thank you all for your attention. Now we would like to proceed to the first of our presentations. Again, we are joined live by uh, instructor Gianluca Zanini and Maestro Lorenzo Lavranzani uh, from Milan. Uh, uh, and uh, hello, are you uh, both with us, gentlemen? Hello. Yeah, we are. Good afternoon to all. Hello, good afternoon. Okay, fantastic. So, um, I wanted to uh, let everyone know that uh, these two gentlemen have so much material to talk about. The, the real challenge is going to be um, allowing them the scope of, of their remarks, um, while at the same time keeping us to our time. So I, forgive me if, uh, if, if we have to be a little bit too brief, but we've prepared a few exhibits uh, based on imagery uh, shared by uh, Chanduka. So I wanted to, to start, if I may, uh, with this discussion uh, to, to just introduce us to the topic. So we're, we're looking at uh, the schema di bastone, uh, so Italian stick fencing, basically. And uh, Gianluca, you've been making a special study. I'm wondering if you can give us all briefly um, uh, just kind of a capsule history of, of stick fencing in Italy uh, that, that you've been uh, making a study of. Sure, I will try to do it. But first of all, thank you for the invitation. I'm honored to be here. And my English is a little bit, little bit rusty. So I'm sorry in advance if I make any misunderstanding or, or a, a bad pronunciation. Well, uh, the topic, uh, as Sean said, it, it's very wide, it's very big. And uh, it's quite difficult to to concentrate uh, every, everything in 10 minutes. But uh, about the, the history of stick fencing in Italy, it's a, it's a kind of a research that's still uh, on process because uh, you know, in Italy we have also a, a, a live tradition of stick fencing, the popular tradition that uh, with Lorenzo recently we find out uh, they share common uh, name of exercise and sequences. So it's quite difficult to, to say now and uh, in so short time, uh, all the history of the stick fancy in Italy. But uh, regarding um, treatises and manual, it happened that during the, the 30s of the 19th century began to be published 
the stick fencing mental. It never happened before. We know that uh, in the Renaissance, uh, the golden age, we have uh, staff manual, but it's like a compendium of the, 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 of the manual itself. It's not uh, the, the main, uh, the main uh, argument. And, uh, and, and start in, uh, in the 40s, beside the French manual, and uh, until uh, the first of the night, the, the, the 20th century, we have a dozen of manuals, um, dozen and half of these manuals are uh, republishing of uh, Minister of War manual, very basic, uh, maybe all the same in uh, Bersaglieri infantry, very different court. And we have uh, three or four men, one of a civil master. And uh, in this manner, of course, we find the more, more interesting and more elaborated uh, theory of the stick fencing. And the cherry is one of them. Uh, why cherry? Because cherry, uh, in my opinion, uh, is like uh, a marozzo of a stick Italian fencing. Uh, his book, his memoir is very, very elaborated and uh, a lot of uh, propedeutic and uh, basic. Uh, he elaborated around 42, 42 sequences and uh, 14 parry with the parry quite very unusual to see. And uh, that's why Cherry Work that to be republished, in my opinion. And uh, also, uh, Cherry's manual has a great plate and great, uh, and great uh, plate and picture. As you see, the portrait is a Mantovani, is an incisore. Uh, I don't know in English uh, exactly. For instance, now you can see the Parata di Quarta Bassa. It's very, you can see this party in, uh, in, uh, in, other, in other Italian manual. It's like a, a, a parata di quarta, but you push the opponent stick on the ground. No? It's, it's uh, quite uh, unusual in the manual, but uh, very surprisingly, it's quite common in the popular uh, South of Italy stick fighting and also in Portuguese stick fighting, you can see this parry very often. And um, it's very, it's another, it's a big, it's another big uh, research, but you know that uh, the, the, uh, a certain kind of Moulinel that uh, Cherry title in one way, like uh, Defense Against Dog or uh, Quadrati, all this name, very, very interestingly appear in uh, Pugliese stick fighting and also in Portuguese stick fighting. The Pugliese uh, stick fighters said that uh, this name was imported by the Portuguese. And so we have this, uh, this why it's very difficult to, to say exactly to speak about the Italian. Mm. It's very complicated because- It's complicated. Yeah. yeah. You have, I mean, you have a sort of- uh, common thing share in popular military Portuguese uh, and uh, yes, please share. Okay, that, thank you. That, I think that that at least grounded us. So we have, we have various regional traditions. We have traditions of, of, um, of different masters uh, and it's only in the 19th century that we're starting to see this you know, actual writing of treatises which are illustrating some elements of those traditions and enabling us to compare and contrast it to Sikh traditions in Portugal, Sikh traditions in, in other places in the Mediterranean. Now, I know both of you are, of course, in Milan, as I've said, uh, and you've been making a special study of trying to trace stick uh, masters and instructions in Milan, if I'm not mistaken. So if we uh, sure. take a look. Sure, old, we are a uh, city in Milan, yeah. Yeah, yes, so, this is a, a map of uh, uh, 1860 of Milan, uh, where I then I put all the, the fencing all. We find it in the Almanacchi, 
Almanacchi of Milan or Jordan of Milan uh, from uh, 1827 to 1890. So almost uh, six, uh, 60 years of uh, fencing master. And it's very interesting because in this Almanacchi, we can find Cherry and he is on the, the title page. In 36, we find uh, Charmantin, Maestri di Scherma e Bastone. You know, a very interesting topic is that uh, in every year, since uh, 27 to 66, there was Maestri di Scherma e Bastone. After 67, this changed and became Maestri di Scherma e Gymnastica. It's very interesting because uh, uh, after the, the unification of Italy, unification, and uh, came uh, the, the, in Italy the Oberdam, Oberdam stick uh, exercise. And this sort of gymnastic with the stick will then, then take place, replace the bastone, the more martial bastone. And uh, Bastone disappeared after 1606. Of course, there was uh, other school that, that uh, teach this kind of uh, Bastone, but it's very important to see that gym, it, the stick became gymnastic. After the 70 of the 19th century in Italy, uh, Bastone is lost, uh, the name Bastone. Mm -hmm. So do, do you think that that's an indication that instruction in stick was moving from a more martial or combative tradition to more of a, a general physical culture, you know, gymnastic uh, tradition? Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, of course, I think that it's a sort of also um, before the unification of Italy, there was a maybe more martial, uh, I mean, tendency of, uh, after the unification, uh, we don't have uh, the, the, the martial part of Bastone in, in Almanacchi, I mean, eh? uh, it's lost. Even if we know that we have a lot of master that keep on teaching this kind of stick until, um, for instance, 1980, we still have Benedetti that teach uh, two hand stick, even if uh, copy a lot of cherry. And uh, interesting to see that in 36, we have the first master recorded is a charming team. And in 41, we have cherry. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe cherry could be the pupil of charming team. I don't know who is Chamartin and I didn't have any chance to to proceed to to go on with the other researches, but well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it this is a very rich field, and it sounds like you're making progress, but it's we're you're far from far from complete in in trying. No, to absolutely, to absolutely. Yeah, it's because Cherry, for instance, I have a lot of record. I know very well the history of uh, Cherry in his childhood and uh, his father. And, uh, but then they move in uh, 182 in Milan. And then I lost it because I had to find other researches in other places. It's very complicated because <clears throat> before, the, before the 1860, uh, there was no anagraphic uh, record uh, in the municipality. You have to go to the church. So right. To, to the church with the uh, registro delle anime, where all were be registered by the church. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so it's made it complete. But it's very interesting thing, just that the uh, Cherry's father, that its name Fisico Giuseppe Cherry, is a famous doctor. It's a famous doctor, and he wrote about Pellagra. I don't know in, 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 uh, in English how to say Pellagra. Uh, mm -hmm. The one who keep on uh, just uh, eating uh, farina, uh, and uh, so you can see his name, find his name in a lot of uh, documents in the medical uh, treatises and mm -hmm. so on. 
But the most interesting thing is that Cherry's father was uh, very pro Napoleon, pro French. Mm. And, uh, around uh, the, the, the last year of the 18th century, uh, a lot of Austrian uh, army passed through, through his village, that is uh, Somma Lombardo, a few kilometers north of Malpensa. And he organized a little army with, <laughs> with uh, all the people and, and the peasant. Uh, so all that to see that uh, maybe, maybe was a cherished father to introduce him to a sort of uh, martial uh, environment. And maybe this uh, martial environment had a lot to do with the French uh, school. Interesting. Interesting. So um, you had mentioned that uh, even with the uh, change from, you know, the Maestri di Scherme Bestone to Maestri di Scherme and Gymnastica, there were still some more combative or more sort of like martial aspects uh, to, to traditions that were, were passed down by masters that maybe didn't end up uh, writing treatises. So is, uh, is uh, Lorenzo still with us? Yes, I'm here. Okay, <laughs> so I wanted to, to, to turn, uh, if, if I may, uh, from, from the historical uh, to sort of bring, yes. bringing us a bit more up to date, Lorenzo, because I understand yes. uh, that uh, you yourself are a maestro in a, in a family tradition of stick fencing. Yes, yes. I'm uh, uh, the, the fourth of a generation of uh, uh, masters at arms. The first was my grand grandfather, Arrigo. And uh, probably before uh, him, <laughs> there was uh, uh, some more that were uh, uh, in the army. Then mm. my grandfather, Italo, then uh, his son, my uncle, Renato, and now I'm, I'm here. And uh, it's uh, very interesting what uh, Gianluca has told to us uh, before, because uh, he, he makes some, some link uh, between uh, stick fencing and gymnastic and uh, he makes links uh, between uh, Italian stick and uh, French stick. Uh, all uh, these uh, are uh, inside our family tradition that is uh, a tradition that uh, is uh, in the in the 20th century not uh, in the 19th century and uh, uh, was born uh, uh, because my grand grandfather and then my grandfather were linked to French and uh, German uh, people uh, during the Second War. And uh, it's very interesting that uh, a lot of uh, uh, movements and techniques that are explained in the Cherry book are still in our uh, tradition as gymnastic. And uh, not only for uh, Cherry, but also for uh, masters that came after him. Uh, I, I, can th I can think about uh, Ceselli from Livorno or also Martinelli, also from Milan too. And that uh, um, explained in the, in the books, in the manuals, uh, a lot of uh, uh, movements that for, now, for, uh, for us now are uh, gymnastic. So probably this uh, kind of uh, techniques and movements were uh, uh, at the same time, uh, something like a martial art and something like a, a gymnastic to, uh, for the physical body for, uh, uh, for grow up as a... Yeah. As a, the, as a fencer, as an athlete, no? Yeah, and, so this, uh, is, this is the classic physical culture. You're cultivating the body. Yes. You're cultivating yes, yes, yes. You know, with these techniques, yes. Yes, and uh, another uh, interesting thing that I, if I, if I may, I asked you to, to put me on the, on the big screen here that I can show something about uh, techniques. Now I, I will use... Uh, uh, a two-hand stick, but not uh, long as uh, the, the usual one, because I'm uh, at home and I, I don't want to break, uh, to don't, uh, I, I don't want to break uh, anything. 
but yes. this is uh, 120 and uh, normally as uh, is uh, like uh, the French one is 140 centimeters and uh, it's very interesting that uh, uh, I don't know if we all you all can see me in the big screen but I uh, I, I can try and eh? if I can okay no probably you, you must uh, put me like uh, I don't remember in English what's the name but on my on the left corner up there's uh, the way to put me Okay. No. But okay, I will stay here. The, the, all the movements that are called pulling it with two hand, they transform with one hand with the walking stick. So there's a connection also between the two hand stick technique and the only one hand walking stick. All the the movement that you can do with a two hand stick using two hands like um, this okay in this way you can also do with only one hand and so if you do like this with one hand you do it like this so there's also a connection a direct connection between the technique of the two handed stick with the the walking stick a lot of people uh, think that uh, there's uh, a connection with the saber, no? Saber mm. to walking stick. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, probably there's a, a direct connection also from the two hand stick to the walking stick because uh, with the saber, we, we can, we, we don't do a uh, mouline uh, very close to the body and uh, with your arm uh, very uh, close to the body. Uh, you better if you stay with the blade uh, <laughs> against your opponent and uh, you protect your uh, your hand uh, and uh, with the stick you can move a lot between and close to your body you can turn all movement that uh, uh, there was uh, used to to this uh, kind of movement mm. now uh the work that uh, me and Gianluca uh, have done in the in, in these years uh, thanks to <laughs> to the lockdown we we were able to make interviews on the on the net with all the family tradition in all around Italy we had more than 20 interviews only the last year and uh, we are uh, now able to to make some connection like he told before. And uh, in the last 10, 15 years, we wrote a regulamentation to mm. try to, mm, to, uh, to, to make the rules, a general rules, like an interstyle rules, to, um, to have uh, the possibility to um, have um, assault and uh, match between uh, fencers of different uh, schools uh, and different styles of stick fencing. Um, in Italy, uh, with uh, with the help of other people, uh, we we do we, we did this. And uh, in the before the pand the pan the pandemic, uh, for two or three years, uh, we start to have competitions and uh, to to try to to make uh, more uh, confident the people to the the stick fighting and the stick fencing. I see. Yeah. So, so they can so they can is. actually try to apply what they study. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Fantastic. So so this is the present. <laughs> right. The, so this is the present. So so would you say um in terms of the the Manuzardi tradition, it is is it oriented uh is it still like a, a I mean, is it primarily a fencing tradition with some things that are cultivation, or is it is it kind of uh, physical cultivation? Or I guess I, you know, I'm I'm trying to understand a little bit more precisely. Is it um, is it 
stick fencing that that you and your yes. grandfather and grandfather. okay so it's, yes it's... yes because we 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 have a a tradition uh, in this in this um in this way we can uh, uh, say that uh, is uh, uh, the the French part of our tradition that mm. we we were uh, uh, teaching box français savate with okay. can fencing cane fencing and baton yeah. uh, fencing and so this was a sport so fencing not uh, yeah. not only physical culture okay. uh, then in the, during the years the the part of the stick fencing because I was a great fan of stick fencing when I was young, yeah. uh, grown up, and so now we we have uh, uh, more stick fencing and for for my part uh, it's also sport fencing in Epe and uh, and a little bit of saber. Um, so uh, it's fencing. Yeah, fantastic. Yes. Fencing. So it it's it, this is amazing so i think that it, it what it sounds like is that stick fencing is alive and well in milan yes in, in italy in general and uh it it sounds like you have uh you and and, and jean luca both have uh have taken some opportunity for the the last couple of years to really start compiling a lot of information so are you looking to? Uh, are you writing a, a book or uh, you know, a, a, or a collection? Are you going to 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 publish some of these interviews uh, at, at some point? Or uh, I'm just curious. Yes, but, uh, yeah, Gianluca had, uh, had published two two books in these ah. uh, last years. The first on uh, Martinelli, Giannino Martinelli, and the second on uh, Giuseppe Cherry, mm. and. Uh, now me, <laughs> I'm I'm uh, writing the Manusardi system on uh, on a book. Fantastic! And, uh, and I hope to to publish it uh, as soon as possible. <laughs> Great, yeah. yeah, Sean. Yes. And regarding all this uh, interview we have done so far, it's uh, we would like to 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 arrive at the conclusion. But mm. I think that uh, we will not, because it's, not everybody are, agree. And, uh, you know, uh, right. above all, on the popular school, uh, everybody, not everybody, but most of them think to be, to be the right uh, history or the right. Uh, and so it would be very difficult to, to, to make something uh, right, uh, mm -hmm. something written. But uh, of course, there is a lot of uh, a lot of thing to to find out. That uh, maybe one day, me and Lorenzo, we we manage to. Yes, but to, all uh, these interviews like, are ava are available on the on the Facebook group La Scherma di Bastone in Italia. On ah. this group, all all the interviews are recorded and published. So everyone is are in. Are in Italian, but uh, uh, who, who, who wants to to see to see them? Yes, you can find we, we interview most of the, the the most important master in the Puglia tradition and the yes. most important master in, in Sicilian tradition. Sicilia, yes, that's great. And some expert, some expert about uh, making walking sticks or history, mm -hmm. and so. There's a lot of uh, interesting material. Fantastic. It. So I will make sure that um, for everyone who is who is attending uh, today, we will send links um, yes. to, uh, to to the relevant groups uh, so that uh, if people are interested and they know Italian, uh, they can go ahead and uh, and and find those interviews because I think this type of preservation is is absolutely inspiring because so much has been lost right we have we have manuals from the 19th century but we don't have a lot of you know um actual information on practice for for masters in, in the united states um you know we have uh, you know if you'll you'll you can speak to this but a little bit about some united states masters in in uh, ben miller's presentation uh, but uh, but the information is is spotty because it was popular, right? So 
I mean, everybody knew about it and or you could just go and study it. And it um, it's only over the passage of decades that things that become that were popular once become popular, uh, less popular in, in a different way. And then the things just fall, fall away. Um, so I'm, I'm, we're very pleased um, and we hope to promote uh, the work that you're doing, uh, you know, with, with the association. So um, just thinking of time, I wanted to see whether there are any uh, other questions uh, from the audience uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, anyone might have for uh, uh, our, our comrades in Milan uh, before we need to move to the, uh, the next presenter. Just check quickly. Okay. And so, Sean? Yes. Um, um, just going forward, I think we just want to mention that there will always be at least five minutes after each presentation for people to ask questions. Mm -hmm. So if you want to put them uh, write them in the chat, you can, as, as the presentation is happening. Um, so that, you know, at that point, we're not, we're not waiting, but. Absolutely. But yeah. So I think there's a question uh, uh, just about uh, the equipment uh, that's used in the, uh, the Manazardi tradition, like what the, uh, you gave us the dimensions of the stick in terms of length for the two handed stick, but uh, there's a question about what is what's the relative thickness that uh, that you're using uh, for for the larger stick. Okay. Yes. So there's a, there's a lot of research also in this uh, in this way because uh, we used to uh, to to use the chestnut uh, canes and uh, uh, double stick and uh, uh, grit stuff uh, since uh, some year ago. But uh, uh, using for combat, the, for really combat, uh, they break themselves uh, a lot uh, and uh, they make uh, uh, splinters. Yeah. Yes, yeah, splinters very and they're very, very dangerous. So we are turning on uh, a different way of uh, stick uh, made uh, from uh, Malacca or Manao, it's something like rattan. Uh, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, make them conic and so these this, uh, kind of sticks are uh, a little lighter but uh, flexible and uh, uh, without no split splitting and uh, very uh, not not so dangerous mm -hmm. uh, the the, uh, the length of a walking stick used uh, uh, for combat is uh, 95 90 95 centimeters and uh, for a grid stick is uh, around 140 and uh, the width at the uh, at the talon is uh, two two something more than two like uh, from two and a half to three for the the the, the, the double uh, double hand stick and uh, the point is uh, around two for the the double hand, and uh, for the single stick, the the walking stick is uh, uh, two point two at the talon and one point seven eight at the point. Mm -hmm. So this is a, the... also in cherry. In cherry is uh, around uh, two point five uh, three yes. centimeter at talon. And uh, yes. two centimeter at the point. Okay. And uh, this, uh, the problem now today is to find a conical stick because mm. it's easy to find a cylinder stick. But to have a proper ba balance, you need a conical balance. stick. But the conical stick, because it's made from an arm of a tree, one C. Yes. And another, another good speech, and, and, and here we open a in a very another research, what's made a stick? So every master like a particular uh, wood essence, and yes. uh, of course south of Italy had uh, wood that uh, there is no in the north of Italy. Oh. Yes. And so here it's very 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 um, 
different, different. Right. So you end up with specific masters, specific traditions have specific equipment because those are the sticks that they have uh, in part. Like they're making a selection from the local, uh, the local wood, the local supplies, everything is very local. And so yes. when you look at it and to start to do comparisons, I mean, maybe there will be techniques or emphasis that are in part influenced by the equipment, which is influenced by what they could get. Yeah. So a lot of complexity, um, but- uh, There's a lot of, also in the, proper, in the, in the teaching is very difficult. For instance, Cherry said that it is not useful to use heavy stick, heavy stick, because it make the shoulder very, uh, Mm, hard shoulder, yeah. No, instead of in the south of Italy, uh, most people just maybe just to to see their strength and their powerful, they use it also very heavy four centimeters, three centimeters, yes. uh, like a virtuosism, no virtue, but mm. like a bigger stick and bigger power of the arm. Uh, so interesting. My grandfather, Italo was uh, one of the, the, the of, uh, his teachings of the best teachings that I, I take from him was that uh, to, to, to be fast, you must study with a fast weapon. And uh, if you start with a fast weapon and then you go to a heavy weapon, you, you, you have the, the ability of uh, uh, change your brain to go fast and then when you take a, a heavy weapon your brain still uh, has, has the memory to go fast and so also with a heavy weapon it will be faster and uh, this is uh, very interesting because uh, it's good also if you think about a pay and foil a lot of masters teach first foil that is a fast weapon and then goes to Epe, that is a little heavier. Mm. Uh, so this is uh, very interesting because uh, uh, a lot of people think that uh, must uh, uh, train with a heavy weapon to be that because after uh, more strength, at, but your brain go not so fast, and uh, this is not. Uh, this is this is interesting. Yeah, well, actually, that that actually is is anticipating. I think some of the things we're going to to find out in the next presentation. So uh, there was one more question just uh, from the audience as to whether there are any plans to translate some of the works into English, uh, since uh, Gianluca is publishing obviously in Italian. Uh, so I'm just wondering. No, uh, Cherry, indeed, the Cherry was uh, translated. That I oh, translate yes. myself in a very rough uh, and rusty English. And thanks to Chris Oldsman, my friend, we, I translated Charlie. Charlie is in English now. Perfect. You... English. English and Italian, both. Excellent. Yes, you can see the problem of this addiction is not very easy to find. I see. But, uh, but the, the test has been translated. Wonderful. So something that, that everyone can hunt for for Christmas. Can, yes. They can confound their relatives by saying, this is all I want. I just need Cherry's treatise in this edition. And then, you know, see what happens. But uh, thank you. Uh, thanks to both of you for uh, thanks entertaining to you. Questions. Thanks to you all. And, thank you. Uh, so I think um, we need to move on. And so I will go ahead and resume our presentation.